top story tonight. The Reserve Bank springs a surprise with a second out of turn rate cut, slashes the repo rate by 25 basis points, calls it preemptive, says the government's fiscal roadmap is convincing, and the disinflationary process has picked up pace. Delight and despair in the Lal Street markets hit new records after RBI's rate cut with Sensex touching 30,000, but panic selling in late trade wipes out all the smiles. In other headlines, Anil Ambani springs a surprise. Reliance Infra pips Hero Moto and M&M to acquire Pipavav Defence. Will shell out over 800 crore rupees for an 18% stake. Reliance Infra will also make an open offer for an additional 26% stake. Despite stiff resistance from the opposition, the Lok Sabha passes the insurance bill which proposes to hike FDI to 49%. The real test awaits in the Rajya Sabha. The other controversial land acquisition bill will be tabled on Monday. The Lok Sabha also passes the coal mine special provisions bill as the second round of coal mine auctions kicks off. 14 blocks up for grabs. Usha Martin wins the Brida and Side mines and Adani Power has back the Jitpur mine. JSW wins the Moitra coal block. It's crunch time for telecom company Spectrum auction kicks off. Entry of Reliance Geo makes a make or break auction for Airtel, Vodafone, ID and others. Government sources say bids were received for all bands, but Telco stayed away from the most expensive 2100 MHz band in Delhi, Mumbai and Karnataka. The cabinet approved the setting up of a Swachh Bharat fund, but defers the creation of the body called 3P India, which will support public-private partnerships. Parliamentarians raised the alarm over the agriculture crisis that has hit many states. Unseasonal rain has wrecked havoc on Ravi crops. Uttar Pradesh seeks a 10,000 crore rupee relief package. Madhya Pradesh also seeks help. Agriculture minister promises to act says there's no dearth of funds. With an eye on the consumer and industry, the finance ministry backs for a moderate GST rate. The revenue neutral rate is likely to be below the current 24%. That's the CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Arvind K. Jival quells the rebellion within the Aam Aadmi Party. Senior leaders Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan removed from the Political Affairs Committee after they refused to resign. Yadav also removed as party spokesperson, but both will continue to work with the Aam Aadmi Party. The budget having a larger fiscal deficit of 3.9% mean that the RBI would delay the next reduction in interest rates. 29,992. Oh oh 30, Almost uh, to 30,000. I mean, 29,000. On expiry date, just uh, somehow. Uh, I know, went back. back. It, that Thursday, it's uh, and kind we of. Get, uh, we get a daily dose of euphoria. Clearly, it's the financials which take the lead, uh, particularly uh, the PSU banks within that clearly should be at the forefront of that move. We presented the budget and discussed it in the media uh, and in Parliament uh, that uh, we are pursuing a very prudent uh, fiscal consolidation roadmap. So revenue deficit capital expenditures are in fact going to look better and the performance is going to be better than by just looking at the central government finances alone. At this point in time, we are not inclined to change the target of 33,500, which we put at the beginning of the year. We moved all the way up to 30,000 this morning. That's where we opened. And thereafter, we managed to hold on to around those levels till late afternoon trade, after which we gave up all of those gains. Well, the inflation warrior has finally softened his stance. Raghuram Rajan has done it again for the second time in a row. The Reserve Bank has cut the repo rate out of turn. The market's cheering the move initially, but then we saw some pretty heavy profit booking coming in towards the late trade, wiping out those gains. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us on India Business Hour. Nantara, should we still call Rajan the inflation warrior? He seems to be shedding off the tag, which the big question is... Well, the inflation <laughs> battle seems to have been won, so, you know, we can't really call him the inflation warrior anymore. But the big anymore, question is, that's not the big problem. in April? Will he cut rates in April or not? That's one of our Twitter questions. Tweet right away and your responses will be live. He does believe that the disinflationary process is picking up pace. Not just that, he's also given a thumbs up to the government's fiscal consolidation roadmap and big moves by Governor Rajan, our top story tonight. The Reserve Bank surprised with another out-of-turn rate cut. Contrary to expectations, the central bank arguing that it is convinced of the improvement in the quality of the fiscal deficit and the sharper than expected fall in inflation. The market is now left wondering if the rate cut was an advantage of the April cut or whether, given the RBI's action, another cut can be expected. Ritu and Lata have more. 
further action will uh, be in the direction that was initiated and that it will depend on developments on the fiscal front as well as a continuation of the disinflationary process. From a governor who insisted on high quality fiscal consolidation, the rate cut was clearly a surprise element, especially given the government had not adhered to the fiscal deficit target of 3.6%. However, the governor has painfully argued that the accumulated bills had given a wrong picture of fiscal finance last year, and hence the achievement on the fiscal front was bigger than the headline numbers suggest. Also, he expects the larger transfer to states without transferring the responsibility to pay for central schemes to lead to lower deficits at the state level. And it's that balance that I think uh, that uh, the RBI has appreciated uh, is that the fiscal consolidation roadmap remains in place, but at the same time the quality of government expenditure uh, is, uh, is, is good uh, and the fact that we've got an off-cycle rate cut from the RBI of course is very welcome for all uh, citizens of India. The other reasons for the advanced rate cut include the faster than expected fall in CPI numbers for January, the global trends towards easing, the low capacity utilization in industry and the weak numbers for production and loan growth which require rate cuts to be anticipatory. This is very much consistent with the assessment in the economic survey and in the budget uh, about uh, the outlook for inflation and the outlook for the economy. It shows that the RBI and the government are on the same page in terms of how we view the economy. <clears throat> it also means that you know, the budget can be seen as uh, conducive to non-inflationary growth. The governor calls his cut preemptive, which is making the markets wonder if there will be another cut in April. He has guided that further cuts will depend on easing of supply constraints, better availability of coal, power, high-quality fiscal consolidation and the monsoons. And since the monsoon forecasts will not be out till the end of April, is an April cut ruled out, we wonder. In Mumbai with Lata Venkatesh, Ritu Singh. Well, he's calling it preemptive action. Perhaps it is coordinated action between the Reserve Bank and the Finance Ministry to aid the economy. So will bankers pass on the rate cuts? Are loans set to become cheaper? Here are a couple of the big bankers on what we can expect on that front. They are acting in tandem with the fiscal. The, mm -hmm. There have been some fiscal incentives in the budget for growth and perhaps uh, they're acting in tandem with the government because the RBI has reduced the repo rate. There is no pressure from the government. We, we take an independent call on all the rates. I think it's. Uh, I think the rate cut is uh, is obviously a positive, uh, and it is something that uh, people have been expecting. Uh, while the Reserve Bank has cut rates, it remains to be seen whether uh, this gets uh, transmitted in terms of uh, lower base rates, etc. In the market, it clearly will benefit people who are targeting the bond market from a fundraising perspective, mm. because that will have an immediate impact in terms of rates at which people are able to raise debt from the bond market. But the transmission from the bank market is still to be seen. That's what the bankers make of the asset turn rate cut. What do the economists have to say? Should we rule out another cut in the April policy? Some economists expect another 25 basis cut in the first half of next fiscal when April cut does seem unlikely. Here's more for the economists. I think after this cut, uh, clearly a window opens for more cuts. Uh, and I think market will be expecting uh, uh, un at least one more cut from here. It's a monetary stimulus and a fiscal stimulus working in tandem. I think this is, uh, apart from the fact that it is a surprise, I think it shows intent on part of the government to boost the economy. We were factoring in 75 basis point cut during the first half of 2015, so by June. I think there is no change per se uh, from our side in, in terms of that expectation. Uh, so in the next quarter, we factor in one more uh, 25 basis point cut. It's almost a reluctant cut, to be honest. Um, it puts a lot of uh, question marks about uh, inflation. It puts question marks about the fist. Um, so. One doesn't know whether this was um, a preemptive cut for the April 7 policy or whether there's a follow-up cut which will happen in April as well. I've had quite a lot of discussions with clients since the budget. The budget having a larger fiscal deficit of 3.9% mean that the RBI would delay mm. the next reduction in interest rates. You know, the logic behind that, if you've got more of the fiscal stimulus, maybe you get less of the monetary stimulus. 
so I think this is a positive surprise and it will make people buy the market. Well, a bunch of reactions there coming into the surprise rate cut there coming in from the Reserve Bank. And the last street was ecstatic, but that turned out to be short-lived as we saw some pretty heavy profit booking towards the late trade, which took its toll. The Sensex did hit that historic mark of 30,000 in early trade, but those gains were wiped out. In fact, the index ended with losses of over 200 points. The Nifty soaring past 9,000, but ended the day well below that. The mid-cap took an even bigger hit with the mid-cap index losing a percent. Anna joins us now to make sense of what's been a dramatic day for our markets. Anna, what explains the late sell-off. You were wearing a shirt, t-shirt that said 30,000 earlier today, but now I see you've gone and changed your clothes. I yeah, was wearing the t-shirt of 30,000, but uh, it was in the red. I mean, the letters were in the red. So maybe uh, that is where, uh, you know, uh, the, the problem was. But look, today was a day when there was euphoria in the first half with the Sensex hitting 30,000. And then there was panic in the second half with 700 point intraday fall, almost a thousand point intraday fall on the bank nifty so quite clearly <coughs> there was nervousness and it's logical to ask whether the market topped out after that rbi rate cut and the initial uptick that we saw in today's trade uh, let's talk about the stocks that let the market down of course right on top were the financials uh, and that was quite a bit of a reversal intraday so stocks like hdfc bank access bank spi they were all down anywhere between two to three percent on a closing basis but were down over six or seven percent on an intraday basis. Let's talk about some other stocks that contributed to the market downtick. It was secular in nature actually. No single stock contributed more than 10 points. So Infosys, Reliance, Larson and Tubro, all the heavyweights were down about half a percent to one percent in trade. The sector that was the biggest loser today actually was metals and quite a bit of selling in metal stocks across the board. So CESA, NMDC, Hindalco, all lower by about four percent in trade today. Now let's talk about some of the stocks which managed to do well. Sun Pharma was your stock of the day today. That was up 6%. Big gains on that. DLF was up 2% and some semblance of buying finally emerging in ITC, though even that came off its intraday highs. Let's talk about mid caps then. It was a sea of red here and especially the high beta ones. They were all down in trade today. IVRCL 8%, NCC 7%, Hindustan Construction 6%. Not just that, Suz Lawn, Jan Irrigation, Bhushan Steel. These are some of the other names that were down quite a bit in trade. So, well, the, the bulls got 30,000, the bears got a lot of intraday ammunition. So, it's, it's quite interesting. Let's see how trade pans out from here on. But there is a risk of the market making a bit of a top, especially for the bank nifty, which at no point looked like going back to its previous highs and has actually slipped quite a bit from intraday highs. If you look at what you said in our strategy, the year beginning you said that there will be improvement in growth and rate cycle together. So we're sort of building that in somewhat uh, in our in our, uh, in our our targets. Uh, so at this point in time, we're not inclined to change the target of 33,500, which we put at the beginning of the year. Uh, at that point in time, it was still a good 22% upside. So, uh, so we have seen uh, some of that come through, but at this point in time, as I said, I'm not uh, looking at changing that target, as we expected some of this to happen. When you look at the valuations, I don't think, you know, the Nifty would justify anything above the current levels. In fact, if I would be, if I would say so, and uh, according to my calculations, Nifty should be about five watt percent lower. Uh, than what it is today, which means that market should sell off, market should correct a tad more and uh, settle somewhere around the 84, 8600 bracket and then build gains as the fundamentals start to improve. Uh, all the expected news flows in terms of budget, in terms of rate cut, etc. have already happened and I don't see anything new or anything meaningful happening to take the markets higher beyond the 9100 level what we saw today. There can be no definition of how high we might go. Uh, I think the biggest question mark, you know, has been in this rally is that it has been built up on expectation with, you know, the economy still requiring help. You know, ultimately we want to see the macro positives translate into bottom line earnings and consumption pick up. And, you know, the last PMI print was weak. So very clearly there's a recognition that the economic fundamentals have still some way to go before they are on a firm improvement path. 
Well, that's the outlook as far as the markets are concerned. They may have peaked in the short term, but the long term trend looks intact. But let's go to the big breaking story. The eagerly awaited Spectrum auction began today with eight companies bidding to acquire airwaves in four bands. Based on the reserve price, the government is estimated to garner over 80,000 crore rupees. But sources say bids worth 60,000 crore rupees are already in. Let's go across to Malvika. She joins us now with all the action. Malvika, what's going on? 82,000 is what they were factoring in from the entire Spectrum auction and 60,000 on day one. Well, 80,000 is a very uh, conservative estimate and that is based on the reserve price. There are sources within the government uh, who are expecting uh, that once the bidding concludes, uh, the government may have garnered over 2 lakh crore rupees. Well, uh, this is going to be the biggest spectrum auction ever. The government is selling airwaves in four spectrum band categories, that is 800, 900, 1800 and 2100 megahertz. That means 2G and 3G spectrum is being bid for uh, together. Uh, the government at the back of the Digital India mission is expecting uh, participants to bid aggressively. There are four, uh, two types of uh, companies who are bidding in the Spectrum auction. Uh, one group comprises of companies like Bharti Airtel, Vodafone, ID and Reliance Communications. And these companies necessarily have to bid for Spectrum to continue operations in circles where their licenses are coming up for renewal. And that has uh, been one of the reasons why there has been an expectation uh, that eventually the government will garner uh, more than what it has estimated for. Uh, but what is also adding to the pressure and aggressive bidding is participation of Reliance, Geo, uh, Tata, uh, Tele um, and Uninor and Aircell since these companies licenses are not coming up for renewal and they're primarily uh, bidding for incremental spectrum. So day one spectacular 60,000 crore rupees worth of bids received by the government. It remains to be seen how things are going to unfold. A quick second question Malvika, any surprises there or as far as the 21 megahertz uh, band is concerned? Well, you know, in 2100 megahertz band, that is the 3G spectrum band, uh, no bidding was seen, according to sources, in Delhi, Mumbai, and Karnataka circles. And this is possibly because uh, 3G spectrum rollout uh, is something uh, that is delayed. The companies have already invested a lot in 3G infrastructure, and only uh, 5 megahertz of spectrum has been put up for auction uh, by the government. Uh, so pr probably right now, companies are focusing on 900 megahertz band of spectrum, uh, most of which which is a spectrum that is held by incumbent players and it is a do or die battle for them. Uh, what I would like, also like to point out is that even though we are seeing aggressive bidding, uh, there are estimates that at the end of the auction, uh, the debt burden of the telecom industry uh, may increase by 70,000 crore rupees. Well, that's the downside as far as the auction is concerned. We can celebrate or cheer 60,000 crore rupees today, but as Malvika was pointing out, there is a downside to this as well. Malvika, appreciate you joining us. So it started off with a bang, the Spectrum auction, day one today, 60,000 crore rupees. Uh, that's the bid that's received by the government. Now, the other big corporate story, and this is a major surprise, Anil Ambani's Reliance Infra has pipped Hero Moto and m, &M to acquire Pipavab Defence. The deal marks the entry of the group into the defence sector in a big way. Many believe the sector will benefit the most from the Make in India campaign. Sajid joins us now with the details. Sajid, you know, there was talk of Hero Moto, Mahindra and Mahindra, and then Reliance Infra goes and seals the deal with Pipavab Defence, but uh, there will also be an open offer. Take us through the deal contours and what this could mean now for Pipava, especially since there isn't going to be equity infusion as of today. It could well be a 2,000 crore uh, deal for the Reliance uh, Group, which is uh, controlled by Anil Ambani uh, and its foray into the defense business. But it's uh, it's going to be through people who are uh, defense. Uh, if you look at the deal value, as I said, it's more than 2,000 crores. It includes a couple of phases. The first phase is acquiring 18% stake for 18, 819 crores from the existing promoters, which is the Gandhi family, and then going ahead and doing an open offer for 26% stake for nearly 1,300 crores uh, there. So, uh, but if the 13 uh, if the open offer is not successful and that's primarily because the current price of people are defense is more than 76 rupees and the open offer is at 66 uh, then they have the option to buy another 7.4 percent stake from the Gandhi family so that the stake of the Reliance group goes about 25 percent uh, in that case the total investment which which the Reliance group would be making will be nearly 1300 uh, crores uh, 
it's go the deal is p going to be perceived as negative for people are primarily because uh, people are is uh, uh, has a balance sheet which has a debt of nearly 7600 crores and the whole reason why uh, a strategic investor coming into people are was looked at or uh, even the Gandhis were planning to exit uh, by part stake uh, was because they wanted to bring in more equity into the, into the deal but this deal which uh, with Reliance Group does not see any equity coming into it in fact the promoters are cashing out uh, they would be getting 18, 819 crores and additional uh, f uh, five, uh, four, uh, 400 crores if they are going to sell the 7.4 percent stake uh, as, as we speak the promoter stake will come down from 42.626 percent to 24.6 percent there going forward uh, there will be a couple of challenges for people who are, they will have to refund and the entire 7,600 uh, 7, crores of uh, debt which they have on the balance sheet. Uh, they, they will need lenders support here because uh, lenders are the one who are controlling uh, how, the, uh, how, how the deal is going to go through. But what Mr. Gandhi told us on seeing this TV18 uh, is that the lenders are on board as far as their change in management is concerned. Uh, at some point of time after the open offer, uh, when Mr. Ambani comes on board as chairman of the company, there would be uh, some kind of equity infusion because Tripi Power is in defense and it requires a huge working capital to go ahead in defense. Even if it, it has a 30,000 crores order book, uh, they, they need at least a billion dollar in cash in the books so that they can go ahead and build ships. So that uh, that money would come through either refinancing or in fresh uh, debt which which might be taken up by the group, uh, Anil Ambani group or uh, via equity infusion into the paper or defense going forward. So so it's uh, in the short term as of as we speak now, it's going to be negative for paper because the street was expecting equity infusion and what has happened is the promoters have cashed out. The deal hasn't been sealed with the Munjas or the Mahindras as is largely speculated with the deal with Reliance Infra. Thanks for Sajid for joining us with those details and here's Nikhil Gandhi of Pipavar saying what Anil Ambani is going to bring to the company and if Pipavar has sufficient capital to fund growth and the debt restructuring plan which are in place and will not see any changes. Mr. Ambani's group is uh very heavily committed to ensure that there is a required capital available to the company and its operations. And uh, since you are very well aware that this company has made uh, significant investment in building the India's finest uh, naval defense facilities, one of its kind in the world, and I don't uh, need much of capital to uh, for uh, into the company because the most of the infrastructure is very much in place, and with the current infrastructure. This company can manufacture uh, large and complex assets like frigates, destroyers, submarines, and aircraft carriers. CDR is absolutely in place. There is no question of deferring the CDR. It's absolutely very much in place. The lenders are fully on board, and all the key lenders have given their approvals. So I think it is on track. Number two, the, by, through the incoming investors, the company is going to get further strength as as it is uh, you know uh, required by the by the company. So I think uh, lenders are going to be far more uh, comfortable with the another investors like uh, uh, Mr. Anil Ambani coming into the uh, the company. So I think uh, all in all, it's a win-win situation for both lenders and the, all the shareholders. Well, that's Nikhil Gandhi there of Pipavav on the rationale behind inking that deal with Reliance Infra. That is going to be a stock to watch out for. What a day it turned out to be. 30,000 on the Sensex, then sharp profit booking, 25 basis points out of turn, rate cut being announced by the Reserve Bank Governor, 60,000 crore rupees on the Spectrum auction on day one. And finally, Pipavav and Reliance Infra. It promises to be even more exciting tomorrow, by the way, so come back to us here on CNBC TV 18.